All right, let's continue with our mouse pointing script. So in the previous video, we went through projectors and how to use them as a graphical element to confirm your selection. So if you want to look at that, go back. Let's get to the script now. So the script I've attached to my world object is called mouse point updated, but we're not going to use that one. We're going to use the one we were working on previously called mouse point. But the mouse just doesn't point anymore, it does a lot more things, so I'm just going to call it mouse. Just call it mouse, alright? Open it up in uh, Mono Develop. And remember to change the class name. So, with the class variables, we need to introduce a couple more of them. The first one is a public game object. Currently selected unit. This is really important, so we can refer to the unit. So and you might be wondering well what if you want to select multiple units if we hold down shift and select multiple units or drag or something well we'll work on that in the next couple of videos but for now let's just get log the logic out of the way on how to actually select them so the we're just going to store the first unit for now okay um, and I'm going to make this static as well in, in case other scripts want to access it and we don't need other instances of it the next thing we need is a private vector 3 and this one's going to be the mouse down point. So when we click our mouse button down, we're going to store the point at which the raycast hits the terrain or the object, okay? That's very important to know. And to set this up, we'll just create a awake function. And to begin with, let's just um, give it a vector 3 of 0. Just a, a default value. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this raycast um, length just to remove that line of code and where we've used it I'm going to use a math function so mathf.infinity so our raycast is going to be infinitely long so there's no way it will miss an object and it's just cutting code remove the line of code we don't need it so that's really good alright so where are we going to store the mouse down point well as soon as the raycast hits something as soon as it hits something we're going to store the point at which it hits so let's just comment this out store point mouse button down. Okay, so if input mouse button down the left mouse button this time if the left mouse button is down just store the mouse points mouse down point hit point. Okay, so that's simple as that. We don't actually know, need these curly braces, so cutting the code down again and the other thing I want to do in this video before we move on um, I don't want to do everything in this video just so you guys understand where I'm coming from so I'm going to make some helper functions make a new region helper functions or you can call them helper methods if you like whatever you like um, and the region and I'm just going to copy and paste these methods from my completed script because I don't want to write them out again <laughs> All right. um, scroll down here so we're going to check if the user performed a mouse click so if we didn't use this function then the mouse would have to go down and up at exactly the same position so let's okay we've because we've renamed the script i think ah right cast length okay math f infinity <laughs> we changed that earlier Alright, so I'm just going to demonstrate the problem we have here if we use the get up and down at exactly the same point. So if we select the unit, we click, it has to be at exactly the same point, but we don't want that. We want it to give it some leeway or a little zone to click in. So if, we, if we're still moving the mouse and we click, it will select the unit as well. So this leeway zone can be as big as you like, guys, but in my script I've done 0 0.8 units. Okay, just re just returns a boolean if it's of whether it's in this zone, the mouse up point. So let's copy and paste this. Very simple to do. Just checks if um, our mouse up is uh, in the zone from our mouse down or our mouse hit. Okay, so we just give it in that in that value there. All right. So now, if the object's moving and we're moving our mouse a little bit, we can select it still as I'm doing here, so I'm moving my mouse but still clicking. Okay, so we could actually make this a bit more one point let's make it one point three or something. And I've just remembered we're using this script at the moment, so one point three.
Okay, so that's working pretty well now. Okay, so that's the first helper function. The second one actually deselects the uh, <clears throat> the unit if it is selected. So we check if the currently selected unit is not null. If it's not, we know there's something selected already. So we find the child, which is the selected object, and we deactivate it firstly, and then we say the currently selected unit is null. So we remove the unit. Okay, very simple again. I'm just going to copy and paste this into our mouse script. Okay, so did user perform a mouse click? Question mark. Okay, these are the two helper functions. Okay, functions that will help us make our code. Okay, guys, so really important stuff. So, in this video, we've just defined a couple of functions and we've referenced our mouse point down. The point at which we press the mouse button down, we store the point where it was pressed. And we used our helper function, so to, to uh, check if the user performed a mouse click, we give it a, uh, a leeway zone, 1.3 units in each direction, to see if it was a click. If not, it would be a drag. So this can be a good test to see if the user is dragging or clicking. Okay, so and the other helper function deselects the game object if it's selected. Okay, so we'll code this in the next video. If something is selected, let's load this up again. So if this is selected, if we click outside of it or click on another object, we call the, the, this method to deselect the currently selected unit. Okay. <laughs> Okay, in the next video we'll finish this off and then we'll go into multiple selections, selecting multiple units. Okay guys, so thanks for watching the video. See you in the next video.